Take a look at the tell the tape for our first bout of the evening. Two young prospects. You see Stevens giving away quite a bit as far as the height advantage is concerned. Durrell at six foot two. The weigh in tonight on our unofficial scales, Durrell gained just one pound while Stevens moved up quite a bit in weight, picking up nearly 10 pounds. Let's take a look at the rules with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Andre Durrell, Curtis Stevens fight is scheduled for 10 rounds, non-title, using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Bob, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, rent generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Bob! Here comes 23-year-old Andre Durrell, decorated amateur, two-time U.S. champion, a bronze medalist at the 2004 Olympic Games, a natural lefty. He fights ambidextrous. Lennox, can he take this a long way, fighting both right-handed and left-handed? Well, the fact that he started like that and he believes that's how he fights, I think it's going to be great because he's going to confuse a lot of his opponents. You know, they're going to see one style, and then when they get hurt, all of a sudden he's going to switch and he's going to confuse them. And, uh, you know, you don't see many boxers that box this type of style. Marvelous Marvin Hagler used to box that style, you know, a great fighter. And uh, his, his, uh, his style right now is, is a growing style that needs a lot of work, but uh, I believe that he's going to give a lot of boxers problems out there. Time for a closer look at Andre Durrell with Larry Merchant. Andre Durrell and his brother Anthony were raised and trained by their grandfather, Leon Dawson, who was an amateur in Louisville at the time that Muhammad Ali, then Cassius Clay, was coming up. There is a connection with, with Ali. Here you see the young, beautiful Muhammad Ali, then Cassius Clay, posing with the mother of the Durrell brothers as an infant. And there you see the family with Leon Lawson to the left of Ali, the brothers to his right, and of and Durrell, Andre Durrell said of that meeting, he smiled until his jaw hurt. He'd like to continue that smile tonight with a victory in his young professional career. That's a closer look at Andre Durrell. Here comes Curtis Stevens out of Brooklyn, New York. Curtis Stevens, another top U.S. amateur, who last summer against an opponent who came in on short notice, Marcos Primera had the fight in control. He got stopped in the eighth round. He's since won his last four. Lennox, is that loss necessarily a bad thing? I don't think it's a bad thing because he's still a young boxer. You know, when you go into a lot of fights and you knock a lot of people out, you kind of lose focus and realize that you believe that you can knock everybody out. But not everybody you can knock out. And he kind of punched himself out in that fight. So I'm sure he learned a lot from it. Larry, let's take a closer look at Curtis Stevens. Curtis Stevens, although he started boxing at the age of five, went on to play football in high school where he was an all-star middle linebacker in Brooklyn. The part of Brooklyn he comes from, Brownsville, where some fighters named Tyson and Bo and Briggs and Judah come from, but he says all of them fell off, got too relaxed when they got to the top, he says it won't happen to him. And one of the unusual aspects of this young man's young professional career is that his mother, who is a counselor in the juvenile justice system in New York, often rides a bicycle behind him for her training early in the mornings. Question tonight is, can Steven stop Durrell from running? Time for the formal introductions. Here's our ring announcer, Greg Dubin. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Mohegan Sun Arena in beautiful Uncasville, Connecticut, where tonight HBO presents an evening of world-class boxing for your pleasure. 
Tonight's fights are promoted by Dabella Entertainment and sponsored by LocateStock.com, FreeTheFan.com, TalkSports, Win Prizes, FreeTheFan.com, and the Connecticut Defenders, Connecticut's hometown team. This bout is sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe, Department of Athletic Regulations, Chairman of the Tribe, Bruce Bosom. The three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system, Tommy Kazmarek, Don Trella, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Richard Flaherty. And now, 10 rounds of boxing in the super middleweight division. Introducing first to my left, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing white with green trim, weighing in officially at 167 pounds, his professional record is perfect, with 11 wins, 7 coming by way of knockout, from Flint, Michigan, Andre the Matrix Durant, and his opponent to my right, fighting out of the red corner, He's wearing white with black, weighing an officially at 166 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 17 wins, one loss, 12 wins coming by way of big knockout from the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, New York. He's one half of the chin checkers, Curtis Showtime Stevie. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to go 10 rounds. I want a good, clean, professional fight. I want you to listen to me and obey my command. Okay, touch them up, guys. Very good. Two young prospects like Stevens and Durrell seldom meet at this early stage of their careers. It is a test for both of them. And refreshing. Durrell has his grandfather, Leon Lawson, tattooed on his back. His daughter, Anisha Lawson, just over a year old, tattooed on his chest. He'll be changing his name to Lawson. No relationship with his father. His grandfather has raised him. Round number one, scheduled for ten. Curtis Stevens said he's going to give Darrell a whole heap of pressure and stay right on him from the first bell. He just wants to crowd him. Lennox, the jab of Darrell, I would think, would be important to control range here. Well, he's doing that. He's, he's, he's putting it out a little further from his body, trying to get the range so he can throw it and get his combinations off. He's, he's pretty composed right now at the moment seeing what he can see and seeing what he can work. Steven said he wants to keep the pressure on but not be reckless. Both fighters have been hurt in their career. Durrell was down in May of last year. Alfonso Rocha dropped him. Stevens hurt and stopped by Marcos Primera last July. There's the switch. From left-handed to orthodox, and then Darrell goes right back. Well, this is what I'm talking about, confusing your opponent. He does it, he does it so well that even Curtis can't even see when he switches. Can, can he stabilize himself where he can sit down and throw hard punches if he's constantly looking to switch from one side to the other? I believe that he's looking to switch and seeing what side's more effective for him in this particular fight. Terrell switches right-handed. Works his jab. He's a natural lefty. Does everything left-handed. Nice. Do you like what you see out of Terrell so far from a movement standpoint? Yeah, he moves very well on his, on his feet. He's not getting hit. He's, he's keeping the fight at a distance, which he should. He's using his size and reach, which is, is, is shows 
good training, good coaching from his, uh, his uncle. This is what you need to do. You don't need to take any unnecessary shots. Control, control the action in the ring and, uh, you know, make the guy do what you want him to do. He knows Curtis is going to come in and he just wants to meet him with some shots. Right now he's, he's making up his mind which, which shots to throw. Waiting for that perfect opportunity. Yeah, but if you wait for perfect opportunities, they may be far and few between and you get around like this. Stevens doing a lot of following of Andre Durrell as we hit the end of round number one. Bang him up. You hear me? Push him against the rope and muffle him up. All right? Sharp defense, though. Don't roll your hand. All right? You work hard for this. Good round. Short right hand. All right? Don't reach for him. Don't reach for him because he's trying to slide out the pocket. Short right hand, bring back the hook, all right? Quick shots inside, all right? But you got to get in there and muscle him a bit. You got to muscle him, all right? Yeah. He's coming. Do you see that open? Do you see that open? I want you to land it. You look good. Just keep working. I want that jab pumping a little more. Exactly. OK, here's my piece. Come on, let's go. Burrell comes from uh, Flint in Michigan, the home right there, of right Chris Bird. Another Southpaw boxer. Now Stevenson's corner told him the right thing to do. He's gotta he's gotta put him up against the ropes. He's gotta get a little bit reckless, not allow Andre Durrell to really do what he wants to do out there. Make it make it a difficult time for him. Lennox, how does the shorter Stevens work his way inside that jab and get inside? Well, he's doing the right thing, he, and, what he, you know, he definitely needs to cut off the ring. He's following him around a bit too much. He needs to set traps for him, put him in that corner, and then explode on him. In the early parts of fights, the boxer generally has the advantage, and it's up to the shorter, stronger fighter to wear him down so that he can get him late in the fight if he can't get him early. But right now, Stevens is not doing enough to wear Durrell down. Not even, he needs to do things to keep him busy, keep him active so he makes some mistakes so he can take advantage of that. At this pace, Durrell could probably go 40 rounds. Right, don't hit, don't hit. I got it, I got it. Curtis hasn't quite figured out what to do yet. And, you know, the first thing he can do is not going for the head, go for the body, hit him to the body. We just seen the Miguel Cotto fight, and you asked me, you know, can he hang with the other boxers out there? He can, he can definitely hang, uh, depending on how he, what, what, what he can do. Like I said, stars make fights. Curtis needs to put him against the ropes, try and set some traps, like I said. And, you know, he's being a bit flat-footed now. He needs to pick up the pace. What about the work rate from Durrell? Would you like to see a little more out of him, too? I would, I would love to see a little bit more out of him. He's, he's not doing enough, either. You know, maybe he just got a good shot right there. Maybe that's a wake-up shot. Durrell trying to shoot his left hand, and Stevens just chasing when, when, when Durrell moves around like that, he needs to come back with a combination and be first. A lot of posturing. Stevens chasing. Durrell just kind of moving around. Durrell rips a couple left hands. Stevens blocked most of it. See, every time he turns Curtis around, he needs to come back with another shot. But he's, he's comfortable just moving away and letting Curtis come back to him. The crowd here at the Mohegan Sun. Not pleased with the work effort from Andre Durrell. Or Curtis Stevens. Keep that jab in his face. Mm -hmm. 
This is the younger brother of Andre Durrell, 23-year-old Anthony Durrell, who is considered the better professional prospect, a puncher, but right now has been going through a series of chemotherapy treatments for lymphoma in his chest. He's had six treatments over the last couple of months and is due for six more. His career is in jeopardy, although he says he is working out every day except for sparring. Larry, when we talked with him yesterday, he seemed very upbeat about his situation and very determined. It, maybe it sounds worse than it is, but it sounds pretty bad to me when you're getting 12 chemotherapy treatments. But youth and optimism, maybe he can overcome it. Anthony ringside watching brother Andre. Andre, 13 months older than Anthony. As we begin the third round. Again, Durrell switches to the conventional stance, works his jab. Not a lot of connects here. You know, you know Bob, boxing we hear all the time is hit and don't be hit. Unfortunately, with fighters like Durrell, it's don't get hit and hit. The hitting part comes second. Not getting hit seems more important to him than hitting. And that's why you get fighters like this. Shot to the body by Stevens. Caught Durrell in the midsection. Lennox, is this where when Stevens gets in there, he cannot allow himself to get tied up? No, I mean, Durrell did a good job. And, and good amateur fighters, which he's got a great amateur background, are learned to, you know, when you get against the ropes, don't let that shorter guy take advantage of you. Tie him up, turn him around, and push him against the ropes. You know, but uh, a remark you made earlier uh, says the trouble, part of the trouble that Stevens is happening, and he was, he had over 250 amateur fight. He's never been a big, tall guy. You would think he knows how to cut off the ring, and he doesn't seem to. This is something his corner should really tell him, you know, cut off that ring, don't allow him to dance. I'm sure they worked on it in the gym, but he needs to apply it in the ring right now. This is the 12th professional fight for Durrell. The best competition he's been in against. And the same could be said for Stevens, who's been in against a bunch of guys that come in on last notice and late notice and come in and give an effort. So both guys, Larry, you mentioned at the beginning, this is a test for both. See, and there you see a, 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 a wild left hand by Curtis Stevens, and he needs to throw a lot more punches than that. You know, right now he's concentrating on trying to get closer to Darrell, but Darrell's got su such good foot movement that it's difficult for him. And Darrell's keeping him at the end of his punches, so it's hard for Curtis to get in. But he needs to throw a lot more punches and become a, a lot more wilder. Catch the next installment of Real Sports among the stories of profile on Yoki Noah, who led the Florida Gators to back-to-back -back NCAA basketball championships. And his father, former tennis star Yannick, was a cultural icon in his native France. Sports of the 20th century returns July 11th with Brooklyn Dodgers, the ghosts of Flatbush. This two-hour film chronicles how this franchise became the symbol of hope for a proud melting pot of American culture when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947 and would impact the team's move to Los Angeles and on its beloved fans. Okay. Water good down there? Got to get that up. Okay, move that. Stevens and Andre Durrell through three of this scheduled 10-round showdown. Let's get the scorecard of our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. Two rats to one, 29-28.
Andre Durrell. Bob, I gave him rounds one and three because I thought he outboxed Curtis Stevens. You know, I always talk about scoring. Uh, I always talk about effective aggressiveness being a big part of scoring. Curtis Stevens is the aggressor. No doubt about it, but he's not effective. He comes in, he doesn't punch. Durrell, on the other hand, you know, not my favorite kind of style, the guy running away, but at least he lands the right jab and a couple of nice straight lefts, enough to win rounds one and three. Two to one, Durrell. And, and Curtis Stevens should be definitely trying to get him to the body, punch where he can hit, uh, punch him on his arms, but get in there. He's allowing Andre to do what he wants. He doesn't seem to be able to get inside of Durrell, and that's because he doesn't have great upper body and head movement so that he can come forward without fear of getting hit by every punch that, that is aimed at him. Well, that's where the foot movement comes in, something to work on. You know, how you get from point A to point B is moving those, shuffling those feet quickly, getting in there and exploding, throwing some combinations. Right now he's just head hunting. He's not even going to the body, not even trying to hit him around the body area. Darrell, I think, up to this point has has learned more about how to deal with Stevens than Stevens has learned how to deal with him. Well, what he does, he, he comes in and out of range. He knows his range, he knows where he can be more effective, he knows where he can score his points, he knows how to get out. It almost seems, Lennox and Larry, that, you know, Durrell had his plan on how to deal with the shorter, powerful Stevens and uh, Richard Flaherty. You're measuring him like that, right? Pull it back. Pull it back. Durrell for measuring, whereas Stevens knew he was fighting the taller Durrell. They know each other from the amateur games, but there seems to be no game plan crafted as to how to offset Durrell's natural physical advantages. Curtis is a very focused individual, and, you know, right now, like I said, he's focused too much on trying to take him out. When he needs to work, this is what I'm talking about. He needs to get wild. This, this is what he needs to do. Give Andre Durrell something to be concerned about. As you can see, he's moving a lot quicker now because he doesn't like that type of pressure. The fans are booing Durrell. That little start might be the best sustained action we've had. Yeah, Curtis needs to do this because it's going to influence the judges. This is, this is what the fans like. The fans are going to in influence the judges. And uh, this is how you win points and, and score. inside this is the first one this is the second one Curtis Stevens trying to find a way inside against Andre Durrell, who has used his movement and his reach to keep Stevens away. See, the referee was warning Durrell and saying he, he was measuring, pouring something that, you know, I used to do, but what, how you get away with it, you got to keep that right hand moving so it doesn't seem like you're measuring your opponent. like you just did there yes you know keep it moving so the referee doesn't feel that you're measuring him Darrell's just happy with one and two punches when he should be throwing some combination punches a little more combination punching Lennox explain for the viewers we see Stevens in a constant chase of Durrell and Durrell gets his back against the ropes. Durrell moves away. How does Stevens cut the ring off? 
and stop chasing. Well, what he needs to do, he needs to get a lot closer to him. Uh -oh. Jarrell must have bit his tongue or something like that. But Curtis needs to get closer to him, shuffle in a little quicker, throw some wild shots, hooking shots, and don't allow him off the ropes. Anytime he tries to get away, like there. Don't allow him to, to, to get out of that situation. You know, in, in boxing you can run but you can't hide. You know, your inner ring which is, has four corners, trap him in one of the corners. Just like that. That was a good job. This is what I'm saying. Did not allowing him to escape. Some loose tape on the left wrist of Andre Durrell. Larry, his nickname is The Matrix, and he certainly disappears whenever Stevens tries to get in range. Uh, you see flashes of him standing boxing, punching, but it's not what he likes to do, apparently. This is the uh, the track and field version of boxing. You run, and you don't want to field any punches. Curtis Stevens, is, you know, is a, a little bit flat-footed. He needs to come up a bit more on that right foot so he, he can react a lot quicker than he's reacting. And Durrell remains in his comfort zone. Through the midway point of the fight. Still to come here on HBO's Boxing After Dark. Holly Malinaji out of Brooklyn, New York, hoping to get a world championship. Very relaxed leading up to this fight. Feels he's ready to do some bigger and better things. Says his hands are healed, and he's ready to take it against the hard-charging Lovemore Endo. That coming up in tonight's main event. Stevens has not found the key to cut off the ranks. See, when Curtis stands like that, it allows Durrell to pot shot at him. You know, he's in his comfort zone right now. You know, he doesn't have nothing to worry about. All he sees is Curtis walking after him. So he has plenty of time to think on what he wants to do, what combination he wants to throw. He's keep, see how he keeps him out there? He's just keeping him out at a distance. Now, this is what Curtis needs to do. Apply the pressure a bit more. Give him a lot more to think about. This is how he can get in. For the copy box to the first five rounds of the fight, Stevens landing just 18 of 168. That's 11 percent. A fighter like Stevens has to be a perpetual motion machine coming in with his shoulders rolling, his head moving, not giving a target. And Stevens doesn't seem capable of doing that. Larry, he said in our talk with him that he doesn't want to be like some of the other fighters from his section of Brooklyn. He needs to take a page out of, say, a young Mike Tyson's playbook, doesn't he? Yeah, well, they reached the top, the fighters he was talking about, before they fell off from being too comfortable, in his words. It's problematic of whether he can get to that top. Right hand from Durrell to the ear. 
Stevens blocks most of it, but it's Darrell throwing the punches. See, he, you know, Curtis had him in the corner and allowed him to escape. You can't do that to a slick boxer like this. Darrell's a slick boxer. Unless Stevens hasn't done the necessary work to the body of Durrell to slow down the guy that wants to run and make him pay. See, he's headhunting when he should be aiming for that body. Hit the body and the head will die. Hurt the body and the head will die. And he's not hurting the body enough. It's still, you know, Curtis is staying just on the outside of... Durrell's punches right, right now. He should be rushing against, rushing him against Rob, trapping him in the corner, not allowing him to escape. I guess if he could do it, he would do it. <laughs> Great point, Larry. Great point. point. Kurt, you're down five rounds. I'm telling you what's going on. Get some ass all on that side. You're dropping your hands in front of him and you're not working. You hear me? Come on, baby. You're down five rounds. You gotta pick it up. All my bullshit. He ain't even fighting, man. You oh, down man. five rounds. Curtis, uh, use your jab right to the body, man. Right to the body. You got to stay close and bang him up. You giving him the chance to work. You, look oh, the the you got to get inside, Kurt. You want to get inside, baby. But don't, don't reach. Come on, you gotta get close to him. You're not uh, getting close. Uh, when you hit him good and strong. Seven rounds. Andre, when you hit him, go two or three punches behind him. Seven, this is seven rounds? Because he, he, was hurt. Oh, he was hurt when he hit him. Well, you heard the Stevens camp say you're down five as we start round number seven. Let's see what Harold Letterman has on his scorecard. Okay, Bob, I agree with the Stevens camp. Five rounds to one, 59-55, Andre Durrell. I gotta tell you, Bob, I hate scoring a fight. For God, it does nothing but running pot shots. But the truth of the matter is, Andre Durrell's winning a fight doing that. I mean, running pot shotting, running pot shotting. Stevens just doesn't move his hands, he'll land it up. I gotta say one thing about the measuring in round four. Lennox Lewis was right, he used to do it all the time. If you stick your left hand out and you keep the boxing glove, closed it's legal you got to keep the glove closed if you open that boxing glove like you're going to stick a thumb in a guy's eye it's not legal Riddick Bowens told me he hit Lennox with an uppercut and break his elbow good left hand by Stevens to the body and then the head Stevens got in three good licks his best series of the night they're watching HBO's boxing after dark pop pop and Lennox Lewis and Larry Merchant ringside, Curtis Stevens and Andre Durrell in a 10-round bout, and then the 140-pound championship, Lovemore Endo defends his title against Pauli Malinaji. So Lennox, how does Stevens do more of that? This, this, this is the time that he needs to do it because the, the fight is slipping away from him, so he needs to make a move now. What he was doing in the first five rounds, he needs to change that and pick it up. Totally. Go mad. He needs to go on. He needs to go in there on the controlled aggression. And you know, I'm always saying that you need to start off with the jab. The jab always helps. It gives your opponent something to think about. When I'm king of the world, you'll have 16 foot rings. So guys like Durrell couldn't run all night. All right, can we make you king tonight? <laughs> you, you, have to remember, late. you have to remember, Muhammad Ali is his hero, so, you know, you can see a little Muhammad Ali in him. Yeah, but Ali would try to use his boxing skills to try to break the opponent down and then try to take him out. Well, Durrell is still young, you know. He's, he's only had a f 11 fights. And he's still, he's still getting better as a professional. One thing I'll say, good friend, that there are times when I see he does snap his jab. You know, and when he gets more confident and can fight, a, a fight without moving constantly, 
then he may have a towing jab that he can work behind. Durrell, this is the second time in his career that he's gone past six. He went eight in his last fight. Right. End of round seven. Curtis Stevens landed the most meaningful blows of that round. Oh, baby, I can't tell you nothing other than you got to jump on him. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. You're chasing him, Kurt. You got to cut him off. You're not cutting him off, baby. Listen to me. You got to cut him off. You're giving him that respect factor. That's why he's sliding all around the ring. All right, go. Cut him off and bone Stop him up. Him now. Stop rushing him. Now. Let's go. With good little face. Stop rushing him now, Curtis. Stop manhandling him now. You hear me? When he's on the table, stop flinging him. Stop using the strength. Build it, build it get, get him right in that middle section, because he is tired. I know he you. is tired. I'm tired. Yeah, I know you are tired. You are tired. No, he's tired. 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 Control aggression means you go in there on behind the jab, making sure you don't leave yourself off balance, throwing wild shots, and making sure that you know your opponent doesn't come back at you. Lennox, you know, we talked about obviously the disparity in the heights. But if you're if you've got a chance to be an elite fighter, you take a disadvantage and turn it into an advantage. And he doesn't seem to be able to do that. He's got to make his punches come more natural, you know. He's, he did come in with a double jab there, but then that's, you know, everybody sees that right hand coming. He needs to throw a lot different, com a lot more different combinations. Especially in, in this weight class, I mean, he's going to always be the shorter guy. Always be the shorter guy. He needs, to, he needs to break these guys down. The only way he can break them down is go to the body and learn how to get in there under controlled aggression and be effective while he's in there. Durrell's very skilled, still throwing sharp, crisp punches. And he's, like I said, he's part shotting right now. He sees an opening. He knows he can get his punches off a lot quicker than Curtis. And that's what he does. He gets it off quick, and then he moves out of position. Curtis has to readjust and try and find him again. This is the 12th pro fight of Darrell's quiver. Max, at some point, isn't he going to have to sit in there in the fire and sit down on some of these punches if he wants to go where he plans to go someday? Yeah, um, like I said, he's only had 11 fights. He's still, he's still learning as, 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 a, as a professional. And these are fights that are going to help him because he's going to go back and look at tape and realize that he could be more effective. You know, stay in the pocket a bit more and throw that combination. Let him go. Nobody down. Terrell has done a lot of moving, running. Stevens has not been able to find his way inside. See, when the fight's in the middle of the round, Terrell has the advantage. All right, all right, I got it. All right, let him out. And we trip to the end of round eight. Still to come, our main event here for the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. The 140-pound title, Lovemore Endo, defends his crown against Pauli Malinaji. He does 100 push-ups every hour. At 35 years of age, he said he's better now than he's ever been. He'll make the first defense of his 140-pound title. Lovemore Endo, 45 career wins, just two and five, though. When he's fought in the United States, he takes on Pauli Malinaji in our main event. Do stuff. And you're letting him do it because you're giving him the room. Don't go out your game plan now, you hear me? Keep your hands Keep up hands. and bang him. Okay. 
That's his jab. Don't get caught with nothing still. Be relentless. Little Tyson, man. Try to get him inside. Be relentless now. Push your legs into him. Oh, right. Fling him on the corner. You got to stop him. When you get started, I don't, want, I don't want you to stop it, man. When you hit him good, I want you to go three and four colleges. And for the first time in Durrell's career, he will go past the eighth round. As we start round number nine. Curtis Stevens was ten in his last fight back in March. A ten-round decision against Darnell Boone. Good right hand to the body from Stevens. We've been waiting about eight rounds for that punch. That's what Curtis needs to do. Terrell is in wonderful condition, young athlete, uh, with a beautiful, beautifully made body. You can see some chance of him making something of himself. You wonder if he will ever settle down to have a real crowd pleasing professional style. Now he has switched to Southpaw. Morrell tags Stevens and then gets away. Curtis is getting a bit frustrated in there because, you know, doesn't really know how to, you know, get at Darrell. He wants Darrell to stand there and fight with him, but He's actually talking, talking, talking to him, trying to fight. egg him on, trying to get him into a fight. He's taunting him now. And Steven should take those taunts personally and try to hit him like a wrecking ball anywhere he can. Terrell sticks and moves. Much to the dismay of the crowd. Right, this is where you take advantage of it, the guy moving. You run after him. Make him run faster. Make the crowd blue. Boo. If he doesn't make it as a pro, maybe uh, Darrell can go back to the Olympics as a 5,000 meter runner. <laughs> you know, it, when you say running, it's, I call it effective moving. You know, moving in and out of problems in and out of dangers. He can move into an offensive position when he wants, when he chooses to. This is what movers do. This is not running. This is effective moving. Have we seen Stevens once as Durrell say circles to his left, actually step to his right and try to cut him off? Well, Durrell is very quick-minded and, and, and quick-footed, and he can move in either direction. This is not standing and getting distance. This is just running. Shoots a left of his own. Go ahead, go ahead. And then lands a hard punch to end round number nine. And the crowd is telling you what they think of this fight. Well, they want to see more of the fight, and you know, I agree with them. I want you to really pick up on the pick up on the mobile. Pick up on the momentum. Okay? You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Set for the tenth and final round for Curtis Stevens and Andre Durrell. Durrell's a lot of movement running. Stevens can't figure out how to cut him off. Okay, Aaron Letterman, how do you have it scored through nine? Okay, Bob, 88, 83, seven rounds to two. Andre Durrell. I mean, did either of these guys ever hear of a four-punch combination? I mean, if they told Stevens in the corner to throw four punches, maybe he would throw one. But in the meantime, Durrell running and punch shotting, running and punch shotting. Up points, also, guys. And, and fighting the I'm worst fight I've ever seen in my life. I'm Seven ready, rounds to two. Oh, Darrell. I got it. Harold. The worst? The worst. Harold, you've seen. Oh, 
thousands of fights. Larry, the, the style is just terrible. This running and pot shot. I mean, you know, stand and fight. Get the fans their money's worth. But how, Larry, you ought to jump in the middle and yell, if you don't fight, you don't get paid. Harold, if he's running, why are you giving him the rounds? Because the other guy's doing less. <laughs> But also, not except Larry, I mean, Stevens has played right into this style. He, he's got nothing to offset it. No, it's his job. You're, you're exactly right, Bob. It's his job to do something about it. If you can't hit the curveball, go to the change of cage and learn how to hit it, right? Stevens aggression there, Lennox. No, he, you know, like I said, he's flat footed right now. He needs to be on his toes. This is the last round for him, man. He needs to go mad in there. Two punches from Durrell, block. Stevens just waits. See, see, Durrell's very relaxed in there. You know, when he's showing his punches, they're fast and Chris is, is basically using no, hardly any effort. He knows how to snap his punches in there. Right hand from Stevens. See, that one punch by, by Stevens isn't working. He needs to be throwing like a dozen punches in there. This, see? Throw that left. If he's moving around to the left, throw double left hooks. Well, I have a question the right. for you. Would you pay money to watch Darrell fight again? Yes, definitely. Okay. Why not? That's you know, he's, he's, doing, he's doing some skillful things in there. He's showing some speed. He's showing some movement. He's showing the fact that he can switch at any moment. He's controlling the action in there. He's not getting hit. Right. There's the foul to end it. Durrell, well, this is the reply from the people who did spend it's, it's, money. It's not a, it's not a crowd, crowd pleasing style. But at the end, he's victorious. Sometimes you lose by winning. See Harold's scorecard, 98-92. I don't think many would disagree. I mean, do you, do you take into account here that this is Durrell's 12th pro fight? I mean, it's. Still early in yeah, the still game. early in his career, and you know he's still learning. This is going to be a great fight for him to go back and watch and realize that he could have did a lot more other things in there. And uh, his his type of fighting is long jeopardy fighting. You know, hitting without getting hit. That shows you know some good sweet science in there. All right, this one will go to the judges' scorecards. Let's take a look at the three judges who will score: Tom Kazmarek. Veteran official scored it for Delahoya in Mayweather's win against Oscar. 115-113. Don Trella uh, had Miguel Cotto in his win over Pauli Malinaji. In that victory for Cotto just over a year ago. And Steve Weisfeld. And the Klitschko Peter fight had Klitschko winning it 114-111. Time for the Official decision. Here's our ring announcer, Greg Dubin. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judges Tommy Kazmarek and Steven Weisfeld both have it 97 93, and Don Trella has it 98 92. For the winner by unanimous decision, Andre Durant. crowd but he gets a decision victory against Curtis Stevens let's take a look at some final punch numbers the guys from CompuBox did not burn their fingers on this one total punches Durrell 
clearly outlanding Stevens in the fight, landing 25%. Stevens was consistent. He averaged about 12% connect the entire fight, averaging 4.3 landed over the 10 rounds per round. Power punches, not enough from Curtis Stevens, landing only 34 of them. Actually, Durrell nearly doubled them up in the power shots landed here in the fight. So Andre Durrell, the bronze medalist from the 2004 Olympic Games, improves to 12-0 with a decision victory, although unfulfilling, against Curtis Stevens.